Hi guys, this is uh, Tony Leonard sitting in on this uh, on the 28th here of July uh, on ZBrush Live. Um, just gonna get some things set up here, but uh, give me a shout out in the chat and let me know if uh, you guys are watching. And uh, I'll get soon started. Cheers. I'll give it uh, about two more minutes. Hold tight. Again, uh, I've uh, got some tabs open for everyone in uh, YouTube and also uh, on Twitch. Um, I'll try to keep my eyes peeled on both, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Tony Leonard. Uh, I am a concept artist based out of here in Los Angeles, California. Uh, and today, it's been a while since I've uh, done a stream, but uh, I figured I'd sort of backtrace a little bit and sort of introduce you guys to something uh, I've been considering doing for a while uh, and that is messing around with um, creating things uh, like say simple geo blockouts or models in ZBrush uh, and there's a new tool that I'd like to introduce um, I think I know that I've talked about doing some like uh, hard surface work with fusion before uh, this time I'm going to switch it up and trade it in for blender uh, using hard ops, uh, which is something that I'd like to talk to you guys to and introduce you to. Um, it's a great add-on tool uh, by a friend of mine, Master Zeon One Zero Zero One, also known as <laughs> Jerry to some. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, try to use uh, Z Modeler 
to do some basic blockouts of uh, shapes and show you how you can sort of compose uh, you know simple blockouts of models and then take those pieces and give them a little bit more uh, of a designed look uh, using tools and hard ops. Uh, more so than hard ops, uh, specifically, I'm going to be messing around with uh, the one of the built-in tools to hard ups, which is called uh, Box Cutter. Um, and Box Cutter is a really cool uh, Boolean tool um, that may give you some really complex uh, Boolean settings. Um, and it really works out well for hard surface design. So without further ado, uh, I'll try to go ahead and start with that. Uh, konnichiwa. <laughs> All right, so I'll go ahead and start. But of course, you know, again, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'll try to keep my eyes peeled between uh, the chat that's going in Twitch and the chat that's going on in YouTube. Um, Usually I have a tool that allows me to see both or all chats, but unfortunately uh, I just moved into a new workstation and unfortunately for some reason the tool that I used for that uh, isn't working properly. So uh, I'm just going to have to keep my eyes on two different tabs in my browser. And uh, So if I miss any questions, uh, bear with me. I'll try to answer everyone's questions. So let's see here. Turn me on. Hi, guys. And I'll get rid of this so you guys can see my screen. And let's uh, turn this back a little bit. There we go. All right. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, I don't know how many of you have ever messed around with um, using the Z Modeler tool, but basically, in ZBrush, as you know, uh, it is a bit of a um, poly editing tool. So I'm just going to start and building out a box. I'm going to draw a box uh, in the viewport of uh, ZBrush and I'm going to make it a poly mesh 3D and I'm going to turn on my poly frames. If I turn on my poly frames, oops, oops, sorry about that. Let's draw it one more time. Hit T on the keyboard model becomes live, uh, make polymesh 3D, and there we go. Uh, so to get started with this, because I want to work with a, a cube and do a little bit of box modeling using the Z Modeler tool, um, if you've never really used Z Modeler, I would highly suggest going into a lot of the videos that uh, Pixelogic has in their classroom uh, on their site, and I would take a look at a lot of, um, I, bl I believe also not just the classroom, but um, Ask ZBrush Channel has uh, a lot of information on, on the tool itself. Uh, I would go there and give it a good watch uh, so you can familiarize yourself with the tool, but I'll, I'll try to go ahead and uh, explain some of it. So what I'm going to do is first, uh, with my cube, I'm going to take and initialize it into a cube cube. Uh, and this is just a basic cube, uh, just default, it's like two by two by two. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Q mesh. Now it makes the cube a little bit smaller so if you have any scaling issues I would try to go ahead and rescale uh, the Q cube uh, before you go too much deeper but I'll go ahead and just get rid of the floor uh, and checking it every once in a while. Uh, one thing that I might explain is of course uh, just for the layman who may not know uh, these little fine hairs here in front uh, being blue uh, that would be the I believe Z forward, uh, Y up would be of course the green, and red would be along the X. So if I'm using any type of symmetry, uh, I know which is the front, which is the you know upper portion of the cube, and then which will be the left and right X uh, value of the cube, right? So I'm going to turn off the floor, and I'm going to hit B and Z. It starts off, uh, there's probably going to be only three brushes here, but you want the Z modeler brush, right? Uh, and at first glance, when you move things around, if you hit the space bar, uh, you're going to want to do that because a lot of the commands that are nested inside of the brush uh, originate or paginate from the space bar. So I'm going to hit it. If I hit it again, oop, like let's say BZ, hit that. There we go. So we have our polygon actions, right? So of course, 
these actions are dependent on three different elements. One being uh, the face of the polygon. So of course, you know, uh, if you have any uh, edits that you would like to uh, do to the face of a, an object, of course, um, you can go into the face mode. Uh, you can go into the actual vertices. So if you mouse over a vertice and click it, there's a different menu uh, for actual you know vertice commands. And then of course the edge, right? So in other words, inserting edges or uh, deleting, uh, creasing, beveling, um, bridging uh, two different edges together uh, to make a face, you can do that. Um, so a lot of these I use in sort of a simplistic manner. Uh, but one of the things that I use a lot is the Q mesh, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and start doing a little block out, have a little bit of fun. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Uh, as to the tool that I spoke of just briefly before I start blocking things out in ZBrush, I'm going to tab over to Blender. Uh, and this is the other uh, piece of the pie that I'm going to put together with ZBrush. Uh, and I'll show you something that I've been kind of working on uh, and what uh, HardOps actually does. HardOps is a separate add-on that you can get uh, probably from the Blender Foundation or I believe the Blender Store. Um, or you could go straight to uh, Jerry's uh, or Master Zeon 1001. He has a Gumroad site. Uh, I would check it out. There, in fact, uh, just Gumroad forward slash Master Zeon 1001. And I'll show you his Gumroad. Um, and he <coughs> and his uh, developer team have created some really great um, add ons here. One being hard ops, and hard ops you can, you know, purchase for about you know what is it twenty dollars, which is really good price for what it is. Uh, but that's probably the only thing that you have to pay for because uh, Blender, as you know, uh, some of you may know, uh, is actually a free three D package, right? It's open source, uh, so that there are no costs associated with downloading it, and you know anyone who has a connection should be able to download it, get it, you know, and install it works on both Mac and PC so that's actually a really cool tool and versus a lot of other 3d packages it's really light and really fast right and there are several different modes as far as like you know poly uh, poly editing and modeling uh, also you know for rendering it uses cycles but there are a lot of other uh, uh, rendering uh, packages that you can use with it such as like octane um, and it's really cool to use right so it takes a little bit of getting used to, but uh, I mean, if you're coming from like say 3ds Max or ZBrush, or you know, just about anything, uh, its navigation and interface might be a little bit different. Maybe closer to Max, and maybe like between Max, Moto, and uh, if I had to pick another, what would it be? Uh, Max, Moto, or or gosh, I think that's about it. Or uh, what is it? Uh, uh, soft image, right? Which, unfortunately, is on the on the outs. But uh, I'll just go ahead and open up something and show you guys what it looks like. So this is something that I've been putting together and sort of experimenting with such a, a workflow. Um, and the idea is basically to sort of you know use Z Modeler as a quick uh, blockout tool, uh, and then be able to you know take parts of that and make ornate you know hard surface designs that have a lot of you know cuts, booleans. Um, you know, something that looks a little bit more mechanical, um, you know, not just, you know, angular shapes or flat, you know, shapes that I would then cut up uh, and then plate. I would just take the geometry as is and start, you know, cutting little bits of uh, geometry out uh, and then mirroring those over. So, but before I get too deep into that, let's go back over to ZBrush. And let's see here. Hi, guys. Blind Fox, what's up? Hello, everyone. Again, if you have any questions, uh, let me know, and I'll try to answer them uh, in order as soon as I can. Oh, let's see, I'm having a little problem with my tablet here. Derp. Come on, tablet. Sorry, guys. Uh, my tablet's a little funky. The cat like chewed on the cable, and unfortunately, like I think it's making my tablet weird out every once in a while. Excuse me for just one second while I reconnect it. Come on, come 
Come on, come on, come on. Come on, tablet. Work. Work. Sorry about this, guys. Give me one sec. One second, I'm having a little bit of technical trouble. Sorry about that. Crazy cat nibbled on my cable and ordered another one, but it's a little shaky. Bad timing as I have to stream today. second. Sorry about this, guys. Sometimes you have to lift the pin up for it to read again. Uh, one second. I'm sorry. Let me know that that works. Come on. Sorry about that. It's so spotty. Come on, come on. Actually, sorry about this. Hold on one second where I try to fix this out. Yeah, I know. It's not just the services. The actual cable is a little hinky. As, uh, again, I have a an anxious cat that it's plugged into the front of my computer and cat cat like, likes to nibble at it. And he nibbled it, so I had to order like a wireless kit for it. And uh, unfortunately, like... Uh, Sec. I'll see if I can fix this really fast so we can continue. I'll try to make up the time uh, and go a little longer if this persists for too long. Tablets could put. Just one more. Let's see if another cable will work. Yes! Sweet. 
had to use a different cable. Thank God I have another cable that is the same size. Not exactly a uh, issue <laughs> gear from Wacom, but I figured it out. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to make sure that I'm oriented uh, face forward, and then I'm going to turn off the floor here so that we just have a cube. Uh, and then I'm going to start doing some things with just um, taking uh, some of the loops out. So it's two by two, so I'm just going to go ahead along the edge, take and do a delete. And I'm going to do a delete by edge loop complete. So I'll take these out really quick and then let the fun begin. So uh, a lot of times when I do um, work with a Z modeler, I also use the transpose and also the world space gizmo. Uh, or the gizmo tool, um, and masking, uh, because I can actually use it to sort of manipulate some of the vertices, uh, like moving them around, so I'll just go ahead and do that. And then if I flip it, uh, I can do stuff like this, just moving around uh, the shape or the set of faces by just masking it, right? So let's say if I want something a little bit longer, I'll push it out which actually everything should stay on its orientation if you look, although even though I'm pulling forward, I'm not accounting for the back. I can deal with that later, right? So of course I'm gonna turn on X so that I'm working on both sides in symmetry. Uh, and then along this face actually, let's see, right about there, I'm gonna go ahead and just do an insert, which will create like an insert edge. Oops, sorry, that's masked. So if you see here, that should be dead center, uh, and then everything after that should be another loop of equal distance, right? And of course these uh, loops, you can do a slide on them and you can move them around. Let's see here, so I'm just going to sort of think about some areas in which I'm going to cut up. Oops. Let's slide it, edge loop complete, because otherwise it'll just slide the one facing edge. Uh, and then of course I'll add some more. Come on. Do, do, do. Ah, there we go. slide here. There we go. Do a little bit of an add. Actually just one. I'll slide that. Ugh, there we go. There we go. And so I'll mask and I'll invert and that way of course Again, with the uh, World Space Gizmo, I can use it to move around uh, and shape my tool. So <clears throat> one of the things that I wanted to mention here is if you hold Alt, of course, when you're using the Gizmo, you see, notice that it unlocks. You can actually click on a vert, uh, and that, that would center it sort of local to where you're working. I'll do something like this. Let's say, for example, clear mask, go ahead and hit Q, and I'll get a face, and I'm just going to use Q mesh to sort of push in some geometry. So I'll hold Alt uh, and get like a selection of just uh, like a single poly, as you can see here. Uh, but you can do it, of course, by poly group, poly group all, uh, border, inner, island, poly loop, which is also a lot of fun. Uh, if you have like a set of loops, uh, looping faces that you wanted to go around uh, and use the same tool. So I'll just push this in and then let's see, I'll try this on this side, push this in and that gives me a flat hood kind of like uh, on the mech that I was just working on. And I'll sort of like try to do like a maybe a different version of the one that I was working on there. So I'm just going to go around that invert the mask so of course you know when you're when you're masking uh, 
you're new to ZBrush, of course, you know, you can mask to select, and it's selecting the, not only just the face, but it's selecting the verts. So I'm just going to let it go, and then I'm going to hold down Control and tap on the canvas, or the background viewport, uh, which should invert the mask. Uh, and then I can use my World Space widget, come Alt, click, it'll orient, and then I can push this back, right? And then I can do something like uh, this, do that, and push that back a little bit. Right. Then I'm going to use uh, BZ again, it's a modeler tool, I'll hold, and do another insert. I think I'm going to put a loop here, slide this back a little bit. Uh, there we go, right about there. And then take this guy, invert it, move tool again, hold, centering it, grab that, move it up, okay, so that's like a front and back of the hood, and let's see here, let's build up some more. So one of the interesting things that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to slope some of these faces uh, so that our design can have something of a more like sort of angular stepped part to the head. So I'm just going to hold Alt, and I'm going to click here and here, these four polys, I'm going to use Q-Mesh, uh, and I'm, I have it by default at 10th step, but I'm just going to go full step, uh, just because this part, I don't think it really matters that much, and I'll raise it up to about the height that I want it, and then I'll come back, and I'll grab these, and I'll set it to something like more of like a quarter step or 10th step, something small, and that way when I raise it up, it gives me this, right, so still quad faces, but at least I have sort of an angled slope in some of those planner faces, right? And then uh, I'll go ahead and do some of the same for the side. I'll raise this up. And I'll do it here. And do it like that. See how that looks. And actually, you know what? I'm going to leave that out. So I think it, I could cut something interesting out of there. But I will do these. There we go. guys do something about bevel and just single row let's see how this looks actually that's gonna the only caveat to using some of the beveling tools in this is sometimes I think it needs to have uh, geometry a certain way um, to actually make it a beveled edge unlike a lot of uh, other applications it's not going to necessarily just make it a, an ingon for you and then let you allow you to sort of solve it uh, you have, so you have to do a little bit of thinking but I actually can work on that uh, in box cutter and get it sort of the shape that I want so that's going to be my head piece or at least the covering for uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and make like maybe another Q cube inside and I'll shape that one out except in this case I'm not going to actually append another uh, Q cube um, interestingly enough, if you hit B, I, and go into the primitives, the insert primitives, and you hit M and look at the menu, there's actually a Q cube inside of there. So you can treat the Q cube as sort of like an insert brush and just, you know, uh, get, oops, oops, I, that, right, M, Q cube, sorry. And I'll take this. that and I like to keep these things um, in my UI so in my UI I actually have split mask points already up here added um, as a sort of a custom along with some of the other mirror and weld uh, merge similar split uh, group split I use these tools a lot um, so I'm going to go ahead and split mask points yeah I know totally Doug like <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny because I thought it, the cable would be okay but um, crazy enough, the cat, literally, just because I'm not messing around, literally, this cat like came not once but twice and gnawed up the actual cable. So it's kind of bizarre. I can't stand that. I have to train him off of my cables or go wireless. 
which is what I'm planning on doing. <laughs> so I'm just going to move this box out. So now we have two separate um, subtools, right? Uh, the main hood that I just sort of blocked out, and then this box, which I'll use for like sort of a main head unit under that. Uh, and I can shape this up. Of course, with the gizmo, you can do a lot of shaping. Uh, here I look at this uh, as a uh, polyframe. Uh, but of course, you can use these handles, like if you're used to a world space uh, widget or a handler um, from a, other packages, it's very similar. Um, you can scale, you know, uh, scale forward or along the X, uh, also, you know, along the Y up. I think this handle is actually turned a little bit. But if it was to be true, it's more like, I guess it, it orients itself wherever you click sometimes. But you can hold Alt, which will unlock it. And you can just hold Shift, and it'll lock itself to, you know, like a straight 90 degree angle, right? So this would be, of course, X, uh, Z forward, uh, and the Y up, right? Uh, so I'm just going to move it so that I have enough space to work with in between. God, my sense. My, I'm almost like about to just say to heck with it and get a new tablet. I have a Cintiq, unfortunately, but it's on another computer. <laughs> and uh, craziness. But let's try to mess around with this a little bit. Again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them uh, in the chat. So I'm going to slide this forward a little bit. Uh, maybe put another loop down here. Alright. That's about right. Good insert here. And of course I'm gonna use Q mesh again. To sort of block out some like sort of just major parts, features that I think are that I want to edit. So I'm gonna slide down. That should be cool. Um, let's do another insert here, and here, and maybe here, and I'll take this guy, this guy, and I'll push those down a little bit. something in the center. So I'm going to take and maybe slide this up just a little bit. And the reason for that is I want sort of equal faces here uh, size-wise. So I'm just going to slide the edge loop up and here at the center I'm going to put like an eye or something like a sensor. So I'm going to do a split uh, and what that'll do is that'll split the vertices and make a circular shape in front. And a lot of times when you notice when I use these tools, um, either on certain edges or something like a split, you'll notice that it automatically puts a uh, crease in the geometry. Uh, and I'll use that to my advantage a little bit. So I'm going to come in here, do a Q mesh, and push this circle piece in. Uh, when the mouse is having some pressure sensitivity problems. Well, all kinds of stuff with my tablet today. Sorry about that. There we go. So I'll push that in. And actually, at this edge, I think I'll take and bevel it. So, you know, without getting too deep into, um, too deep into uh, how things work with uh, Z Modeler, I mean, it's, it's, for what it is, it's, I mean, it's, I think it's a work in progress, but it's, it's a very cool tool. Uh, and you can do a lot of modeling with it, which is excellent. But, Let's do something like this, nice even little bevel. Uh, and you can always check your shapes and see how they're forming up. Now, if I was to subdivide this, of course, none of these shapes are going to hold. Uh, you know, I'll have to do some creasing or something, or um, in the thought of maybe doing something that's, uh, you know, like uh, 
non-subdivided geometry, I would probably have to res it up and you know try to make some of those shapes whole. Uh, you can always do something like you know uh, reinforcing uh, edge loops. Let's say if I add an insert, uh, an edge here. Uh, I would say the only thing that you have to be careful of is if you're using smoothing groups or something like that. But uh, let's see, I'm gonna slide this over. just not, not going to behave with me today. So I'm just going to move this over close to the edge. Uh, and if I did another one here, I'll just show you this, how sort of this works. So I slid it over enough, and then I'm going to insert another one along the edge here. So I'll hit insert instead of slide again, and I'll insert it. Right. There we go. Okay, so just, you see how these loops here, this, this edge loop here, is actually pretty close to the edge, and I'm using it to actually hold the shape, right? Because if, if there's an edge loop there, it'll hold it uh, and maintain its shape a little bit more. And I think if I was to go ahead and add one more here close to the corner, oops, there we go. Uh, and then I use sub uh, dynamic subdivision, right? Uh, so right now I haven't been using it, but if I go ahead and just say always yes, anytime on the keyboard that I hit D, uh, it's going to show me a preview of its of the subtool um, with some smoothing on it, right? Kind of like a, in Maya or any other 3D package when you use turbo smoothing, that sort of thing. Um, it'll show you sort of a preview of how it would be if it was subdivided, right? And you can adjust that by going over to the geometry, dynamic subdiv, and you can change it here. Uh, so right now it's by default it's using two. I can do, you know use it on up to like four or something like that. And let's see. And it just gets smoother and smoother, right? But I really don't need to go too high. I just need to sort of preview it to see what shapes hold. But where I put those reinforcement edge loops like near the corners, so like one here, one here, and one on the other side, facing, uh, but perpendicular. Um, it's actually holding the corners quite well, right? So I could either do something like that or use creasing, right? So let's just go back. Right, so with creasing, of course, I can hold over the edge, hit crease, and of course, with the creasing menu, um, you want to check something like your crease settings because it, if you leave it by default, I'm sure it would hold an absolute sharp edge, but you can soften it. So like, I think I've talked about this before where a lot of things with hard surface, if you uh, soften the edge of the crease, it'll look a little bit more like it was molded and not laser cut per se, right? Uh, assuming the Boolean operations you were referring to in Blender can be done in ZBrush. Hmm, that would be neat. Uh, some of those can be done, yes. So I can show you two different ways, if you'd like, um, of doing a, a sort of a Boolean operation, right? They're, they're exactly two different things, right? So uh, let's say if I take this shape, I'm going to hit F so I can frame it up. Uh, if I wanted to add another shape, like, um, let's see, the eye, I'll grab another primitive. Say this shape here. This is a good one. I'll come out of uh, polyframe view, and I'll draw it along the surface. Right. And I'm holding shift to straighten it out. And let's grab that wibbit widget. Wibbit wibbit widget. Sorry, I'm having a hard time talking today. I'm so tired. running into each other. There we go. So once I have something placed like this and I split it, if you were to do this in ZBrush, I would probably do something like take this shape, 
move it up, uh, and then I would hit this little arrow here, which would make a start group, and then I would hit this, uh, which would be sort of like the negative, sort of like a intersecting. There are two different intersecting buttons. One uh, would take out the middle converging part, and the other would just make the whole thing sort of a, a cutout. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and if I look at it in polyframe view, um, what I need to do first is go over to render, uh, render booleans, live boolean, right? And you'll sort of see this uh, hatch mark on the object, right? And if I move this, oh, there we go. If I move this object and intersect it with the start, you can see uh, if I turn polyframes off, it disappears and it just starts to show me the boolean, right? And this is this is great. This is great. Um, because if I really think about the shapes, I can then, you know, sort of take a shape out. And actually, let me hold this and put the hood up top, and we'll work underneath that on our start group, right? So I can move these pieces around, and they would just, you know, of course, the, the piece that I'm actually uh, choosing to be an intersect will just uh, sort of disappear, and it'll show me a live preview of what that boolean is going to look at or look like before I actually commit it, right? So now uh, if I just take uh, these two and go down to boolean and make boolean mesh, it'll make sort of like a, akin to an adaptive skin. Uh, it'll make a, an appendable copy and it'll start with a U and that will be my union mesh, right? So uh, actually I should off just for a second. Let's. Yep, that's right. So it, whatever object you're cutting from has to be on top, and then the the, the pieces that are cut being cut out have to go underneath that within that start group, right? Uh, so let me try that again. I'm going to make a boolean mesh again, and it should be just that box with the boolean piece cut out. There we are. And if I take and append that. you can see that this is a shape that has been cut with a boolean. There we go. And what it does is it automatically solves and closes off the faces uh, and gives you uh, your boolean. Now, something like this I might actually take and, you know, as non-subdivided geometry and kick it out somewhere, you know, do other things in Fusion or Box Cutter or something like that. But if I needed to do it within ZBrush, this is how I would I would just think about the pieces that are coming out and one by one start you know uh, doing a preview to cut it out of a shape and then let it solve. And of course, you know I could either retopologize this, Z remesh it, or uh, maybe change it to a Dynamesh, or you know uh, you could decimate it that sort of thing. But that's exactly how that would work. And in the case of this, uh, I'm actually going go ahead and keep working on blocking the thing out, but I'll show you what I kind of do in Blender. So on this guy, I've been doing exactly that, like taking just an OBJ that has been exported out of ZBrush, uh, and cutting out the head piece, uh, and then the torso piece. Uh, and it, now it's actually turning into more parts uh, that are selectable, because I've actually done a Boolean and separated little shapes out of a larger hole, right? So all of this, in fact, actually, I need to solve this little bit of geometry, but I can edit this geometry, uh, and using some of uh, hard ops, I can actually solve um, some of the geometry uh, so that it makes a little bit more sense, and then kick it back to ZBrush and keep sculpting, right? So I do booleans, and then using some symmetry tools within uh, box cutter and hard ops, I actually kick them over uh, to the other side. So in other words, uh, unlike ZBrush where, you know, you have symmetry that, you know, is pretty live, you know, like if you do one thing on one side, then it get, affects uh, the other side as well. In this one, I actually have to uh, perform operations here on one side, and then what I can do is I can hit uh, uh, a shortcut key here. In fact, I'm going to hit Alt-W and start box cutter. Uh, and then I'm just going to show you really quick. Let's turn... Let's say it this way. I actually didn't copy this over, but just to show, Alt X, and I can use the symmetrize feature here, and it'll kick details over to the other side. You see? So this guy got copied over from the actual 
I believe it's negative x over to positive x, or vice versa. Yeah. So, um, move this over and zoom in a little bit. And then I'll show, say, for example, hold, holding control. I'm just going to make a little. Geometry into there. Oop, actually, that didn't affect the surface. There we go. So, something like that is a simplistic. Now, I guess uh, in newer versions of Box Cutter, uh, you can cut shapes on like a 2D box and have that go into the geometry, uh, but it's it, it can be edited, which is great. So, I just made like a simple like sort of inserted uh, box that's cut away into this uh, tiny as it is but let's try that again and I'll show you a few things so one of the cool things about this is that I can make cuts into this geometry um, let's see who's in the box actually let's do put the cursor down here and I'll hold control and just click oop. oops somehow box cutter got turned off there we are so it actually draws boxes to the face the direction I guess the normal of the face and so if I let this go after I drag it out it will become an actual 3d box and I'll just bring it down ever so slightly and I can hit tab to hold it and I'm just gonna zoom in here and scroll over to it so here's some magical stuff that is happening here. Not only is it going to boolean out this shape here, but I can actually take it by the edge here, and it'll turn blue, and I can actually bevel the edges of this cutout shape, right? So doing something like this, and I hit enter on the keyboard or double click it, and it'll actually cut it out. Actually, let's try that one more time. So I'm just gonna This, bring this down, put a tab. Uh, I can also actually hold on a second. Let's hit escape and go into the D menu. I think I need to change this rotation angle to one. And then holding control, click and drag, bring it out, pull it down just ever so slightly. I'm gonna hit tab and then I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard. And this is going directionally, so I believe right now it's going on the Y, but I can turn it. And then I should be able to click on one of these dots, pull it forward. There we go. Right about there. And of course, if I go ahead and just double click, it should cut it out. So a nice, clean sharp bevel right there at the edge right and to get it on to the other side I'll just go ahead and of course like I did before hit alt X and it kicks the detail over to the other side right so after doing some work I could probably take something like this and then kick it back to ZBrush um, although I would check some of Jerry's uh, tutorials um, he does have some excellent workflows that he's introduced or explained in his uh, YouTube channel um, that would allow you to go ahead and uh, uh, save your geometry out. There's a little bit of a prep that you need to do because some of the geometry can get uh, a little bit crazy. But, um, you know, so many booleans, uh, some of the edges might get a little funky. And, uh, of course, some of the be with commands that uh, sort of soften up the edges. Uh, these are like bevel modifiers that are along these edges. really familiar with Blender, used Maya in the past for those familiar with both. How does Blender compare? Blender is a, a really good package. I would say for for the cost of zero, you know, I mean, to the end user, it has an excellent community, uh, lots of resources to learn it. Um, you know, I, 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 I think I've only been using Blender collectively for about a week uh, in total, maybe if that. Um, and just, you know, you, once you get past the navigation, how things work and then of course specifically 
I've been watching a lot of tutorials on using box cutter and, and uh, hard ups um, as a package inside of Blender to do a lot of concepting for hard surface stuff. So with stuff like this, you know, of course I could save it out. Uh, let's see, let's see what it looks like if I was to save it out. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect all. certain steps within Blender because I'm not, you know, I'm outside of my element, I'm not in Maya or, you know, something else and just take some of these and try to work with them. So I'm going to hit that and that. I think that's most of all the pieces. Yep. That guy there. And let's just say, for example, what happens if I save it out? So Export this. Or let's see. Export. And I guess I'll save it as a OBJ. Oops. There we go. I'll just save it on, right on my desktop. Export OBJ. And let's look at it and see what it looks like. I'm now I'm curious myself. There we go, there's our OBJ. And I'll take something like Marmoset and see what it looks like. So I think actually I hid a cube, its default cube, from Go. So let me see if I can select that and find it and then hide it. There we go, cube. Uh, turn cube off. Turn sphere off. Let's get rid of that. I'm not sure exactly why that's there. But it was there. Sky. I'll pick a different sky just for just for giggles. There we go. And I don't think that uh, any of the materials got saved to it, but as you can see, all of the geometry is fairly holding. I think I hope I selected it all, but you can use it sort of to get some general shapes um, to further details in your block out, which is awesome. And it looks like it's complete. There might be an ingon or two that you might have to solve. Um, I know I had some faces that were not totally working out somewhere here near this little arm connector area, but definitely for hard surface design, there are some advantages, especially where you don't want it to sort of conform to an exact, you know, uh, where you want to be creative enough to, to, you know, make some mechanical details on your own. Uh, maybe if you're using ref or something like that, but you know, a lot of this holds pretty well. Um, I believe that Master Xeon has a playlist on his channel uh, that'll show you exactly how to get things outside of um, Blender and HardOps and be able to use it in another app. Um, you have to prepare your geometry a little bit more. I think uh, under batch operations, there's a tool called batch operations, which I believe he said that they may change this this workflow, but uh, you can use it to sort of solve out uh, some of your bevels and sharps that you put into your model, uh, should you make it in hard ops, and then, you know, you can export that right back uh, to Maya, ZBrush, wherever you're going. But in this case, ZBrush, right? Uh, so let's just take a look and see what it looks like if I was to bring it back. So let's say I will append a star. And just on top of this star, I'm going to go ahead and use import. Oh! I don't know why that would be. Hmm. Let's try that again, actually. Let's just pick a different, uh, the star as a tool. I'll hit import and come back. 
back down. Grab that guy. Yep. Uh, yes. Okay. So somewhere there was an error in some of the faces. Yeah. So if you don't solve it, um, what happens is some of the stuff that's hidden actually again is showing, and I would need to delete that, but uh, here, I'll just do this. Go down to polygroup, auto group, and then merge similar groups. That way, with in balance, uh, in symmetry, everything is the same. So here you can see where I'm, I actually have some damaged faces, so I have to probably follow that workflow uh, and seal it up a little bit better. But what I can do is I'll just go ahead and hide this, this guy. So some of these areas look a little bit broken because they have ingon faces in them and they're not they're not sealed up and ZBrush is trying to to <laughs> close probably some of these as best it can. So after the operations that I do, it should fix out and solve. Um, I might not have that much time to actually do that right now, but uh, let's go back and work on our block out a little bit more. But just to show you that you can actually, you know, export, and some of these shapes will hold. Uh, definitely, you know, it's, it's it's a tool that's worth, you know, investigating and trying out. I myself am still trying to work some out some of its details, but it, it should work out to be pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna go back over here uh, and just take a little gander at what I was designing. Select this guy, and again I'll oops, hit Alt W. And this blue icon here is actually box cutter, and this yellow one here means that the add-ons are both loaded and working. Uh, make a box shape here. Come down, hit Tab, hold that, turn it, and then maybe along this edge here. little bevel just to show you again kind of how they, they work in here and of course you know uh, there are some different modes in here like let's say for example you wanted to take a piece of this um, and actually not do just a straight you know cut out but if you wanted to slice it right along the same shape so I could actually take control make another box bring it down again and I'll tab it which will you know, hold the shape, sort of pause it and hold the shape. I'll zoom, bring this up a little bit, and of course, at that edge, I'll make another bevel. Uh, and then on the keyboard, I'm going to hit X. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, this will actually do a slice uh, and slice this piece out, but it'll also do it to the depth of the cursor, which is this little crosshair here. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit Enter. And there it is. There's like a nice little uh, shape that has been cut out, like just one beveled shape and then another one on the inside of that. So it, it can get complex. I mean, kind of like um, if you're thinking in how you're going to cut stuff out um, and then you, you make some you know separated geometry, it, it works out really cool because you can sort of do things in steps, right? So I'm just gonna hit D uh, and I go for a circle and actually something like uh, one on the numpad, three, and let's see here, Move it up. and you can get, you know, other shapes as well, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead, cut out a little bit of a circle somewhere, okay. and so that I don't get any faceting, you can actually change those little points that were on the cursor, uh, but I've just made like a nice solid, you know, cut out from that and I can actually come back and double those edges in there right? so let's see. 
There are a few steps that I've already followed, so like this here. So I want to, before I get too ahead of myself, I actually want to go ahead and mirror them over. And I'm just going to Alt X again, click, and move them over. So what I've done to this side actually shows up on this side of the mesh. Uh, same thing. Uh, one of the other tools, there's some really nice um, operations inside of this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just do a clean mesh see if I can solve. So in edit mode of this, of course, you know, I didn't want to get too too deep into the features, basic features of um, Blender. It's more so just to show you how you can block out something uh, in ZBrush and bring it in here and start uh, messing around with um, with hard ops uh, inside of Blender. It's actually not that hard, but let's go back a little bit. Come over here. Let's see, I think it was this guy, and actually this guy I don't need anymore. So I'm going to delete. There we go. And I have this boolean shape, but I'm not going to use it yet. So I'm just going to click and take that start group out. This guy I don't need yet. So I'm going to delete it, and then the boolean piece from before, it'll stay in the tools, but I don't need it right now, so I'm going to delete it. I just wanted to actually keep uh, building some piece shapes uh, and aligning them. So take this, bring this in, do like this here. There we go. Bring this guy up. Does it look complex? It's actually not that complex. No fear. No fear. Just jump in. Just do it. Do it live. It'll it'll all work out. At least worth, you know, giving a look and trying to see how it works, you know. <laughs> guys on a full step and pull it out. There we go. And I'm going to take these guys, pull those out just a tad. Right? Maybe take this and this, pull those out. Right? Again, I'm going to use um, masking and also the gizmo to move some of the vertices around. There we go. Oops. To flip that. Flip the mask. There we go. Then, clearing the mask again, I'm going to add a few more inserted uh, loops. Right here and here. Uh, and just about here, I wanted to actually create like a sort of a stitch circle again and then commission it out. So I'll have like a, a place where I could put like a, a joint. Um, this also works with you know methods that you're doing if you're kit bashing and you want to block out a general form. Um, that also works, right? So you know if like if you want to deal with something that's um, 
non-subdivided geometry, you know, just build up the, the faces into a shape, uh, and then have like a nice little sort of like proxy model to uh, base things off of. You know, Z Modeler is actually a really cool tool for, for doing stuff like that. Um, along with some of the newer tools, which I, I still have to get a handle on um, by using lattices and deformers. But for this today, I just wanted to come in here and mess around with doing a stitch, or actually not a stitch, excuse me, um, just using a Z modeler and a Q cube to do a few things. Why is this not? Split, sorry, not, not stitch, split. There we go. So that's on both sides, I believe. Yep. Uh, probably have to do a corresponding one on the inside of this. And even if it's not the same shape, I think I can do this. Take and hold Alt. Oops. Click these faces and just push them in. And it should make a perfect hole, right? Of course, you know, if I needed to straighten out this, I can, you know, go ahead and grab the, the set of verts, mask it off, and move it around, and get it nice and round, as, as round as I need it to be. Gundam, maybe? Not exactly Gundam. Just a droid. <laughs> Just a, the head of a droid, right? But, uh, yeah, you could, you could build something like that. Yeah, if you, you know, um, I'm not sure if some of these tool, the same tools or features are built into it, but you could always have a look at uh, ZBrush Core, which um, is a sort of light equivalent to ZBrush itself, uh, and I would give it a go and try out some of the tools. Um, I think you could probably use a Q-Cube in Z -Core, or ZBrush Core. I'm, I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've used ZBrush Core, actually. But, um, yeah, you could probably give that a go at it save yourself the 700 duck bucks but you know at least for learning purposes try it out it's i mean it's basically like a, a light version of, of zbrush uh in its full version but you know compressed a little bit more uh, into some a smaller package right but it has a lot of the same uh, basic features and whatnot that you can use so that is going to be the head and let's see going to use another box. Actually, that that center got a little off, but I'm not worried because I could probably fix it later. Right now, I just really want to block in a shape of the thing. So, use I, and we're going to insert a cylinder. I'll do it here. This is a interesting one, but uh, it has a lot of loops in it, this insert, so maybe I'll try something else. I'll take a QQ, stick it in here, separate it, and then on this QQ, I'll take and initialize it into a Q cylinder same setting, right? Uh, and then I'll move that cylinder over. Oops. I have to turn symmetry off for a second. Move this in. Okay. And then I'll take this later and just do a mirror and weld. So if I want sort of a cylindrical, like, head shape piece on the side of the head, I'll just take it and deal with it. So I'm going to hit uh, PZ, the Z modeler tool again, take this, delete it, delete that out. Uh, I'm going to take this edge here and do an edge, edge loop complete bevel, right? So that seems good. What I can do here is because when I subdivide it, it would look like this. I'm not holding any edges. I'm going to go ahead and just do a crease. And I'll decrease it, not partial or not by the edge, but just complete. 
boom, boom, boom. Subdivide it. Oh, something got creased along here. Take this out. And this guy out. There we go. That's weird. There we go. Yep. Right, there we go. Here. Oops. and I'll apply it and what I'll do now yeah that's quite a bit but that's all right I'll go ahead and delete lower and see how it looks actually let's go down a step so I don't want to make it too complex so I'll delete higher and delete lower Even though it's got a little bit of faceting on it, I can bump that up, but I don't want to smooth it by too much, uh, just because I, I want to treat this really as a nice little block out. Um, whenever you're using symmetry or insert meshes, like one of the things that you can do to sort of equally edit things on both sides of the model, um, especially if you're using the gizmo, is turn on Elsin. Uh, remember to turn it maybe off because sometimes uh, it'll do some funky things when you do uh, scaling. Let's see. There we go. So those two will kind of intersect, right? And I'll scale it a little bit. There we go. So I'll have some fun with that later, but I'll go ahead modify topo and just uh, mirror and weld it. Again, having to turn LSIM off and then mirror and weld it. Because if you try to mirror and weld it with the LSIM on, it'll actually uh, symmetrize it locally um, and it'll just make one side like the other. It won't actually do it on the other side. Right. A lot of training to get back on your feet. You know what? I always, I always think of it this way. Somebody a friend of mine said, oh, this guy's a master at ZBrush. I am not a master at ZBrush. Uh, the, 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 usually the, the attitude that I take is I'm a student of, of, of ZBrush. Uh, maybe maybe that learning level might be higher than you know than it was at start, but I, I always try to keep myself in sort of a, uh, a learning mode, uh, as a perpetual studenthood sort of mode. Uh, and it just, you know, it, it, it helps me you know, stay on it, stay on, on trying to learn new tools. So, for some reason, my sensitivity on my tablet, even though I changed cables, is still strange. So bear with me here. I'll try to move a few things around. solo and I think with symmetry turned off I'm gonna grab one side and do a delete hidden there we go uh, and then I'm gonna turn on the floor just so I can see if I'm oriented enough I'll take this guy flip it use this guy bring it actually right there to the edge and then I'm off my X. Uh, I'm actually on the opposite side of the X side here. So I'm dealing not on this this red line here. I'm actually on the other side of it. So what I'm going to do is clear this mask and just do like a mirror and weld, or a mirror, um, and then a mirror and weld. So if you ever get something where you're not simming correctly, you can always come to deformation and then do a mirror, right? still on center, and 
then I can do now modify geometry here and weld. Right? So that should bring it back to equal siding. <laughs> in any weather. Today it's very hot in LA. It has been very extremely like I can almost feel like the climate change happening in real time. It's bizarre. I don't know if it's like maybe volcanoes or fires that we've been having. Um, volcano, of course, Hawaii, but maybe that is affecting the weather, but it, we've had some really, really hot days here. So it's crazy. I prefer to stay inside and get the AC going because you know, I'm, I'm usually so busy you know, these days. There's most of our head, and let's see if we can have some fun. Uh, I go ahead and just block in some rabbit ears. I'll do a Q cube again. Oh, whoops! Don't want to do that. Uh, be weary, if you are using any type of insert meshes and you have a mesh that is selected using the gizmo, uh, if you change shapes or choose a shape while the gizmo is on, it's actually going to swap it out for whatever the insert is. So be careful of that because you could do that, which that is not what I wanted to do. So I'll hit Q, go back into draw mode, and of course draw some new shapes. So I'm going to draw this guy. Forgot to turn X back on, but that's okay. But let's see if we can do this. Not this guy. I'll just use a good old QQ. There we go. And remember to split mass points because your model will be masked, but the the object will not. this. Now I can move it. And I'll scale it. Actually, no, not like that. Like this. Make it a little bit thinner. Uh, oops. There we go. Sorry, every once in a while I have to flip over and use my mouse because as I try to alt, click, and zoom, my tablet is being a little wonky still. I think the pressure sen sensitivity is being weird. Uh, hold on one second. I'm going to try to stop my tablet services and restart it. See if that works out. There we go. Alright. So because I wanted this in symmetry, of course, you know, uh, I'm going to mirror and weld, then hit X. Change this guy over a little bit. And now I can move these into place. And just for fun, we'll try to give him give this guy some rabbit ears. I love rabbit ears. Rabbit ears are cool. There, and we'll hold shift. Move this guy. And then actually, you know what I'll do is no sense in wasting a good Q cube. So I'll go ahead and duplicate this. And then if I push this guy out, move it down, and rotate it. this guy here, shorten it, and then bring it up here, click it into place where I want it, yep. and make those intersecting, like that, maybe. Now, of course, you know, um, because you can manipulate faces with, uh, you know, QMesh and uh, using the Z Modeler tool, you know, this is sort of the start of how I just like, you know, 
add pieces on and try to make them a little bit more uh, ornate, I guess would be the term I would use, but just, you know, giving things more design details. slide as you look complete. Slide this down and I'll go ahead and do an insert. Inserting some more. But just out of curiosity, um, uh, can everyone hear me okay? Is my mic picking up or all right? Can you hear me? Do let me know in the chat if you can hear me all right. Oh yes, uh, let's see here. I had meant to check on everyone's questions. <laughs> Chappy Reborn. Yeah, maybe something like Chappy-esque, I would say. I would actually maybe lift his, his bunny ears up a little bit more. But uh, it's kind of a Valkyrie-like sort of design theme. You know, with the, the whole wings and the helmet. But only roboticized, you know? So, let's see. Gotta save. Alright. In fact, that's a good idea. Always take a moment to save. smaller than a full step, tenth of a step, maybe. Well, maybe not so much, but I think you guys get the idea. Oops. Yeah, that's cool. That'll work. And let's see. I'll take this one, this one. This one here and this one, and I'll drop them down. Oh, let's see what happened to that front face. Didn't like that. So let's see what's up. Try it again. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, take this guy and this guy. Maybe and this and this. And I don't know. Let's go back. So I'm unselecting these because I didn't like how it was turning out. And I'll do like that. That looks better. This guy and this guy do the same over here. Take this one here and I'll push this one in. Alright, so that's kind of angled. in some ways reduced to using a using my mouse to move, move certain make certain moves sorry about the difficulties with my Wacom tablet literally like my cat like 
nibbled at the end of uh, the cable. Like I said, he sits in my chair and he, he likes to nibble on the cord. So it's probably my fault. I should probably put the cord in the back of the computer and then he wouldn't get at it. But I think Cat would find a way. That's his, that's his style. There we go. And I just want to look at this and move around a few of these birds. So I'm going to mask that off and click here and go along this edge here. Just move this around. Take this guy. Move it in. Do it like that. And let's see. Q. We'll do an insert here. I'm just doing this so that I can actually sort of manually bevel this ed this corner vert here. So I'm just masking and inver inverting it and then using the widget to, to move it again. So like that. So like that. There we go. I think that would be an interesting shape later on. A little bit more geo and it could shape up to, to actually be something that I want to get. Of course, using it together with the together with the Z modeler. these in just ever so slightly. Ooh. There we are. Turn it off. And you know I'm going to hit the move tool, which is W on the keyboard, uh, and then I'm going to use the actual old school transpose and see if I can hit R and just rotate these out just a little bit. Yep, that would be neat. So if I wanted to, if I wanted to separate like the actual mechanism where the ear is mounted and the actual fin so I could maybe, you know, have a, a part where the ear could move, I would just start chopping here uh, and then make some, some bits to actually connect uh, the parts like a little small like a servo or a hydraulic uh, so they could lift. So I mean, that's what sort of like this is, it's just like a representation of being able to angle it, right? So I'm not looking at for like the, I guess what you would call secondary and tertiary forms. I'm just basically doing initial blockout forms with a little bit of you know secondary form, right? And I'm kind of planning and thinking ahead, like, okay, so this is an ear feature and a hood feature, and the hood I can actually, you know, maybe come in here. Uh, gosh, zooming in on this is crazy. Um, I could come in and use the Z modeler to, you know, extend out some details from that. So like maybe like this, and this, right? Uh, and then maybe pluck some of these out. So you know, just holding Alt and going along the edge, I can pull a little bit more of this out, right? Uh, if I wanted to, I suppose I could do like a little bit of a bevel 
Let's try it out and see how it looks. Yeah, let's see. The weird thing is, I don't like bubbling along there. It's kind of weird. Actually, it depends on sort of how your geometry is set up, but you need to actually have some connecting edges there for that uh, to make the bevel work right. And I know Joe had uh, Joe, Joseph Drust had some excellent uh, moves for that, and I actually just forgot them. <laughs> I need to go back and study up on that. So, but uh, there's some tricky stuff with using some of the bevels there. But when you look at it, sort of as a soft shape, you know, no creasing or anything has done, been done yet, but these are sort of like some nice contours that it would take. And I would look at it and see, you know, if this if this is a shape that I could work with, um, you know, how could I, even when I smooth it, can I move some of these pieces up, and how would it look? Uh, so I'm just kind of, you know, basically going through and creating uh, shape language, more or less, right? And then I would take it over to box cutter and do something like, you know, cut in some smaller details. But do I work with Houdini? No, I haven't. I have friends that do, um, and Houdini is really cool. Um, it's more than than just a 3D package. I think there's a lot of procedural stuff in it that it's just totally beyond me. But I would I would love to, if I had the time to, to learn it, I would love to learn. It. Um, along with C4D, because I think between the two, you can do a lot of like actual more motion and animation effects. But um, most of the stuff that I do, especially work-wise, is um, just con you know doing concepts uh, and doing a, a lot of like sort of conceptual modeling stuff, not necessarily production modeling, um, because a lot of times you know I just want to sit and be able to create uh, forms uh, to a, a spec. Uh, a specification that a client may have, you know, uh, build this, you know, okay, so I build this and then I, I approach it from both drawing 2D and then I do it, you know, uh, as an actual 3D model and then that model gets taken by somebody and possibly, you know, reproduced so that it's actually functional on screen uh, or in game. So, you know, I leave it to somebody else to do sort of the more procedural modeling, but I would love to learn it. I've seen some really cool stuff uh, done with it. You know, uh, in fact, uh, one guy j recently, I, I forget the gentleman's name, but he was doing some tests with, uh, with an octopus, and that looked really cool. But, yep. Uh, so, I'm actually going to turn. So, Shift D comes out of dynamic subdiv. So, just if you're curious, uh, you don't necessarily have to get lost. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to add insert here. There we go. And let me remind myself to take a look at things in the chat. Yeah, it does it does it does kind of feel a little similar um, to using like the, the Z modeler tool, sure. Uh, life killed thirteen. If that if that was your statement, Max, I don't know. Max, Max, I know um, uses a lot of like modifiers and whatnot, but I I actually don't use Max, unfortunately. I've I've been able to to get by without using it, but I have a lot of friends that use it and swear by it. So for some reason, I've just never been able to put my head around it. Zebrush, yes. <laughs> Maya, somewhat. Uh, There and then do dynamic solo. And just get this guy. Flip mask. There we go. Bend that into shape. That should be cool.
this back a bit. There we go. Alright. And of course. There we go. So you know, just again, like, um, even if you weren't going to do something like going to Blender or another package, uh, a lot of times I, I build, you know, uh, proxy shells or, or meshes in this manner where, you know, I'll just start blocking something out using a, a simple Q cube. And then once I have, like, the, enough geo to make it work, um, of course, you know, there's using Booleans like uh, I just showed you previously with inside of ZBrush. Um, and then you can cut some stuff out of that, but you would need to probably z remesh some of it. Some sometimes not all of the geometry works out or solves. So keep that in mind. Uh, I actually want to see if I can pull this guy up. There we go. Like that. Actually I'll pull this guy down. shape of that a little bit better. So for this, I'm actually thinking to take this and just Q-mesh this down and just sort of create that sort of angled cutaway sort of die-cast look. Casted metal, where they have like a sort of cut groove into things, but that's one way to deal with it. Q-mesh, if you Q-mesh it through to the other side, it'll actually make a cutaway hole, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then you could take and you know, put like a, a bevel, I believe, on something like that. Um, if you take this geometry somewhere else, like uh, Maya or probably Max, I'm sure you could grab the complete edge loop from the square here on the outside and just give it a nice bevel, and that should work. Um, or you could bu bubble the inner edges and round it off. here. And another neat thing is you can actually bridge some faces together. So I have um, two polys that will face each other across. I'm going to create sort of like a little bar in between them. So I can take, uh, put like a loop there and there. And then I'll take this and do a split. There and then I'll alt click on these individual faces here. I think that's a little bit small. So here, 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 and here. And if I pull this out using a Q mesh, it'll snap together at the center and it'll actually close it. Alright? So if you smooth it, now I have like a little pole. Like a like a bar that runs through uh, both shapes, and it'll it'll actually keep. Oh, let's see. I should 
D. Keep its form just like that. Both have a lot of hotkeys. Even well, I mean, you know, ZBrush also has a lot of hotkeys, but you know, it's one of those things you just gotta like try to remember them. But it, I mean, a lot of stuff in menus, and, um, in various apps, especially 3D apps, like you can always find the feature in the menu uh, and then sort of keep hold of its you know hotkey of whatever it's gonna be. All right, so now. Try to give this thing a little bit of a torso. So I'm going to use uh, insert Q mesh again and from the primitives. Hit M, Q cube. I'm going to draw it out again. This one I'm going to make a little bit bigger, and I think I'm going to actually use the widget to pull it down. And this will be something of a torso here. I'm going to split mast points because then it would unattach itself from whatever I drew it to up here on the head. Uh, and then I'm just going to mess with this for a little bit. So. myself one more step, so I'm going to use uh, the Z uh, monolith brush again, B, Z, and I'm going to alt, click on some of these faces at the bottom, pull out another row for me to use, I do, I want to try to keep this line uh, sort of perpendicular to where I would think of an arm going. So I'm going to clear the mask and just take this and along the edge and slide it. And when I slide it, I'm going to do an edge loop complete. Here and this guy, or this these these polys in here, just under the head. I'm actually going to Q mesh those inwards. So I'm going to take this, hold, push these in, create like sort of a sunken area, uh, and then I think from here and here and here, I'm going to lower these. This guy and this guy I might pull this out a little bit. And move things around. As you can see, it's starting to come to shape, right? You just take a few minutes to 
kind of just think about the box, the 3D box, and where those faces are going, what, what forms you're building up. This one here, invert it, and move it down. Just keep it even with the rest of those edges. But this guy, I'm going to flip the mask on. And actually pull it down. And we have the same sort of shape there. Pull this back a little bit out. So now I can start working on like the chest plate. Uh, maybe also you know, start thinking about shapes in the back. You know, maybe push some of these uh, poly faces in to create sort of that torso shape. Uh, also along here, if I do another split, and then Q mesh. Full step, or right, let's go half step. And then push this inward. All right. We can also, and for those that might not be familiar, uh, in ZBrush, when you have different poly groups, of course, and you're using the Gizmo and or the Transpose, uh, you can always take your Control key and click on a poly group, and it'll actually mask it out. Um, and then. Uh, when you're doing that, like say for example, I want to get the transpose, drag it out to one direction here, I'm just going to move this out, redraw it, right? And then holding control and shift, I'm going to click here, oops, did it only, oh, it's the same poly group, actually, sorry, uh, let's see. Second. Right, so I'm going to make that a poly group different than the rest. And then on this one, I should be able to control. Uh, sorry, the sensitivity of my mouse is going back and forth sometimes. I don't know why. I can't grab it the way that I would usually grab it. Grab the, the poly faces, sorry. Um, we'll do that. Move this out of the way. Just do a control click. And now, I'm just going to grab this from here to here. Hold this. I wanted to do an extrude, but for some reason it's not. Well, the, pressure sensitivity on my pen is not allowing me to do what I wanted to do. Uh, let's see if I can find out a different way to do this. I could probably just split it again instead of being difficult, so I'll do that. Yep. And then I'll take these guys just so I can extrude it out. sort of nest in some steps in here. And then of course, because that's a complete loop, uh, I'll go ahead and just bevel it on the inside of this. Okay. A little creasing and that'll be okay. Okay. 
just so I can retain some shapes. So I'll go ahead and click about a little bit and just uh, make sure I can keep some of these edges for now at least. And of course, you know, creases, you know, I can put them in and I can take them out, you know, um, breaking down shapes if I wanted to. But when I smooth it, I want to make sure that some of them are not, you know, in bad places because then it'll unnecessarily look like a few spots are too sharp. Uh, when that happens, like here, like it might be too a little bit too sharp, I can take those out and edit them. Uh, so may maybe too many edges that have uh, creasing on them. I can go back and sort of select which edges that I don't want to have creasing on it, just hold the Alt key down, like say for example, uh, you have your crease, and just by the edge, singular edge, uh, and those that I don't want, I can just Alt, the cursor turns to minus, and you can just take them out, like maybe here and here, maybe too many in here, but I'll leave it for now. Actually, let's do this guy, this guy, this guy, and we'll push these in. Yep, so I can actually put some uh, things in, in there behind those. I'll take this, fold that in a little bit. Uh, maybe go along here, do an insert. And get this inward. Let's see, actually, let's change our step on that one. Quarter step, pull it all the way down. See, now I need to straighten that out. Let's see if I can straighten it. Turning on dynamic subdiv again, and I'm just gonna. I think that I just have like a. If I hit crease, just on the single edge, or you could do edge loop partial, which actually go will go half the expanse of a single or complete edge loop, right? There we go. Let's see what that looks like. So not so bad. There's some weird uh, creases here that I would probably have to take up, take out. But um, this is the sort of level at which I would block something out, and then as I saved it, again, bringing it back into something like Blender as an OBJ, the simple parts, and then from here I would just go ahead and start cutting. So, I mean, just to show you again, it's just some some simple uh, features of of uh, hard ops. I'm, I'm mostly concentrating on this blue icon here, which is the actual box cutter. And I'm just basically using, you know, simple shapes with maybe s some beveling uh, to redact them from a larger shape, right? So every time it makes a split of something and it makes a solid shape, like I believe I did a slice here, I can then take, you know, even those slice pieces, and if they're selectable, I can select them and start cutting them up as well, right? So, you know, uh, holding control, oops, actually, sorry, wrong cut, hit the D menu, go from circle to box, uh, and, oh, there's something actually I missed uh, talking to you guys about, 
there, these are the shapes that you can use. You can use actually a drawn ingon, a box, and a circle. Uh, and believe it or not, just based on those three like very simple shapes, you can do a lot. Because um, let's say for example, I choose ingon, and I'm going to go to the maybe a side view or a straight view of it, and I'll take something out like. Uh, maybe here at the back. This is a nice place. Um, I can actually hold down control. Oops. Sorry. Forgot to edit, click my shape. Uh, hold control and just click. Do a sort of a pointillized click on you know, the shapes that I want to make. go and it's made my shape. Now these points, if they weren't straight enough before, I can actually take them and sort of rearrange them. Uh, but this is an ingon shape, right? There are more than four sides to it. Uh, it's five-sided or more, right? To make an ingon. And then, of course, if I wanted to make it uh, a slice instead of a straight cutaway, what I can do is I can hit X uh, and then I'll go ahead and either enter it hit enter on the keyboard or double click it and there's my sliced up area right so that could be the start of a, a sort of new uh, design motif right you cut it straight across right the shape uh, and it's on both sides so I don't actually have to mirror it I just have to live with it and if it worked out which it looks like it did it could be pretty sweet Let's see, let's rotate this. The only thing that I, I have a, a problem with in Blender is I'm so unused to this navigation. And that if you could get past the navigation, you, you, you're made, you've probably made the first step <laughs> in your journey. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hit D again. Um, I'm going to do something like just using a box. And I'm going to cut like, some boxes into this. Gotta select your shape. Remember to select your shape. So do like this here. And if you hit the space bar, you can actually move the shape around. Uh, you can turn it. And I'll just move this. so it cuts into the mesh a little bit and if I can grab that and here's something that's very cool so I've made the shape I've beveled it uh, I know how far into the mesh it's gonna actually cut uh, now what if I wanted to do more than one so um, box cutter does have an array and you can hit V and pull these down and get a, another shape here uh, and if I wanted to do it along a different axis, so instead of like, I believe this is a Y axis, I can go Z or X, and I should change the axis, right? And then just double click it, and it cuts it out. But it looks like my other shape also got cut out for some reason. I'm not sure exactly how that worked out, but just to show. In fact, is this a different shape? Let's see select everything. Those are some smaller shapes on one side. Yeah, not sure how it worked out, but I, what I just did was basically an array uh, cut boolean. So pretty neat tools that you can use. All right. So next time around, um, I'm actually it's six o'clock straight up. I'm gonna have to jump off, but uh, do give these tools a look. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just. Um, drop a link in the chat. Uh, you can always check some of them out here. Uh, let's see. I'll do that for YouTube. Do this for YouTube. And 
give it a go. Yeah, these are awesome. Uh, let's see. Also for Twitch folks. Uh, that would be interesting. <laughs> that would that would that might involve a couple of conversations, Doug. <laughs> but very cool. It would be neat. Hey, in fact, if you could if you could actually have a, like a Z script from from Master Zion for ZBrush that did some of the similar things, that would be awesome. That would be really really awesome. But you know, I have no crystal ball, so we'll see. <laughs> But I'll give you Jerry, guy, you guys, Jerry's link, and I, I know you guys know where to find Blender. Uh, you can find it at the Blender Foundation, and of course, you know it's absolutely an open source, free application. And if you needed a box modeler to sort of complement, you know, your sculpting, there you go. All right, th guys, thanks again for watching uh, and participating with me. Uh, really enjoy doing these streams with you guys. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when I'm scheduled again uh, to stream, but do stay tuned to the Pixelogic ZBrush Live uh, page, because I'm sure at least, uh, maybe at least once, maybe twice, uh, maybe in the upcoming month I'll, I'll have time to come on and stream, but I've been in the middle of a few things uh, that are keeping me busy. But cheers, and thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching. Namaste. Have a good one. Have a good weekend. Stay cool. Alrighty. Peace.